Jiena marlin xikluna natikom merħba fil-program Maltis Down Under, program bi-produzzjoni mil-belt ta' Melbourne. Grazi li għetterġaw tinaqdu maħna. Il-lum sarin laqaw komma wiħet mil-managers ta' klab tal-futbol fil-Premier League nazjonali. Nitkalmu koll ma' artist u skultur u ma' ex-detektif ta' l-omiċidi. Lawa l-intervista ta' għana l-lum, Mark Avellino jitkellem ma' Jason Sherry, wiħet mil-managers ta' l-klab St. Albans Saints li kompetu fil-Premier League nazjonali. My journey started, I guess, when I was younger, um, uh, playing uh, for uh, North Sunshine United Soccer Club, who um, back in those days was a Maltese um, club. Um, and um, yeah, just with, with my, my father watching games on the weekends and obviously that aroused interest in the sport. Um, and yeah, spent several years playing at North Sunshine as a junior with my, uh, along with my brother as well, who played there at the time. Um, I ended up starting my own sportswear business um, through the passion of, you know, I guess loving sport itself, soccer and, and the fashion industry. Um, so I had my own soccer label called Cherry Sports. Um, and basically from there it just grew. Um, you know, I had my own sports store, um, then um, had a, a big network, network of people that are, were involved in the game coming through the store. And that helped me a little bit later on in, in my journey. Um, but my, my, uh, my primary role is a football operations manager um, at the St Albans Saints Football Club um, and also uh, as a um, football operations advisor at the Sunshine George Cross uh, Soccer Club. But my, my going back a little bit, um, the way it all evolved was um, I, I was helping my son's team uh, when he was a junior, yeah. played at Green Gully um, for a number of years. And I was always involved in some, some capacity, whether it be assisting the coach or being a team manager. So from then on, um, I was asked by um, Arthur Pappas, who's currently the Green Gully senior coach, to um, take a pretty much a full-time role at Altona Magic back in uh, late, uh, late 2000s. Um, and I spent a couple of seasons um, at um, Altona Magic as football operations yeah. manager. Uh, very fortunate to be quite successful there. We won two back-to-back -back Premier Leagues. Let's go back just a little bit to your life as a um, designer mm. uh, for Sherry's Apparel. Yep. Um, did you kind of just fall into that? Um, I love fashion, mm -hmm. uh, just in general. Um, and yeah, look, uh, I'm always sketching things and drawing things. I've um, always had a passion for uh, you know all the new jerseys that were coming out overseas um, and kept a, a tab on all of that. Um, and eventually, um, you know, it actually did start it off as a bit of a joke, the business, because I said to someone um, who, who was a, at the time a seamstress, and I said, uh, look, you know, um, you should start making some soccer jerseys. And she sent around to me and said, oh, well, you know, come up with some designs. And believe it or not, within a space of three weeks, I went out and sourced fabric, I went out and sourced out, you know, uh, patterns and, and all that sort of thing. And I think within about a month, we had a sample range together, um, mm -hmm. went out there. Um, I was 21 years old when I started my business, so I was uh, pretty naive at the time when it came to, I guess, business knowledge. Um, and then from then uh, on, uh, we, you know, it, it progressed a little bit more and I ended up having two sports stores, Grand Gully, for, for a number of years, probably close to maybe 10 years, um, were wearing my brand. Um, and same with, with George Cross as well. And, 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 and a, a few back then, it wasn't called the um, NPL, it was called the Premier League. Um, and, you know, and I, I think at one stage, out of, the 14 teams in the competition at the time, I had about seven clubs or six clubs were in my brand. Um, you know, when you are uh, looking at younger players in particular mm. and you come across occasionally a Maltese surname, yep. do you find yourself just habitually getting interested just to see if you discover Yeah, I, look, I do, I do. And um, one of the exercises I've actually been doing over the last three, four weeks is actually going through um, and looking at um, a lot of the NPL sides and how many of them um, at the moment have um, players of Maltese heritage in, in, this, in these squads. And that's from their under 12s all the way to under, you know, their under 18s and seniors. Um, so there are a few. Well, why players. have you been doing that? Just uh... Look, something that probably annoys me a little bit is the fact that we, um, I'm very strong of the view that we, we sometimes 
don't look after our, our own well enough mm -hmm. and, and being involved at St Albans with, with, with uh, you know, a Croatian heritage and seeing how, you know, they, they, it's, it's, they try to encourage people from their own background to, to come to the club. But also too, um, you know, if, if there is um, young players that are Maltese and, and, and they show some promise and they're good enough, um, you know, whether it be at Sunshine George Cross, whether it be that, you know, I get coaches asking me all the time, you know, is there anything out there, whatever, and being able to maybe help those young kids in some sort of direction um, as to, to maybe an opportunity for them to play at a higher level or improve themselves um, across the board. So. That, that, is, that is definitely something that I, you know, I guess maybe it's a bit biased, you can't help it that you do it, but, we but, all you, do. but you yeah. do, you know. Yeah. Jason, you know, that brings us to, to a really, really good point of um, the evolution of, um, especially in Melbourne, the two Maltese clubs, you know, mm -hmm. such and George Cross and, and Green Gully, and, you know, at different stages, they've, their success has ebbed and flowed. Um, what do you think has been the characteristic of, um, of these clubs when you think of the origin of the Maltese passion for, for soccer? Yeah, look, I think, um, I guess obviously, um, you know, like most clubs in Victoria and I guess Australia, they've got some sort of um, ethnic heritage and, 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 you know, certainly Sunshine George Cross and Green Gully have probably um, flown the flag for the Maltese football fraternity here in Victoria amongst maybe some other smaller clubs as well back in the 60s and 70s and 80s where, where migration was quite um, fluent uh, you know you, you people tended to go and support those clubs probably in greater numbers mm. um, society's changed a fair bit um, so the fact that those people now are a lot older um, you know there, there's more things to do in, in in life now with with you know entertainment there's more things to see more things to do so people now make a choice um, do I go watch the soccer or do I go and do something else um, Green Gully has been quite successful um, probably one of the most successful clubs in the last 15 20 years they've won championships they're constantly in that sort of top five top six clubs in the in the in the um, Premier League or NPL I should say George Cross have, have, have probably been a little bit different in the sense that um, they're going through a rebuilding process at the moment. They're in good shape. Mm. Um, I think that the fact that they're moving to a new premises um, in, in uh, Caroline Springs, there's, there's a real plan to what they're going to do and what, what they've actually already started doing. So yes, there has been a bit of a, bit of a lull um, and a bit of a thing for them over the last maybe 15 years. But I, I believe that um, they're actually quite in good shape in where they're going. But I think the exciting thing about um, you know the, the Maltese football community is that we've got you know uh, Green Gully playing in the NPL, we've got Sunshine and George Cross who are you know aspiring to do you know do great things, and it's not they're not just talking about it; they're they're actually actioning actioning those things. Um, you know, if we go a little bit higher than that, we've got you know um, you know Kevin Musket is 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 obviously you know coaching one of the biggest clubs in in the country mm. um you know you've got the likes of um anthony grimer who's involved with the football federation of victoria in the marketing department and as we go down the track th there's so many maltese people that are involved in in football or soccer as such in victoria and and they're all a lot of people are in influential positions mm.